Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about the basics of ECG. ECG or electrocardiogram actually records the electrical activity of the heart and it is recorded with the help of certain metal electrodes. In the beginning let's talk about a little bit about the electrophysiology of heart. As you all know the electrical activity of the heart starts at SA node which is also known as the pacemaker of the heart. Once the activity is generated in the SA node then it spreads towards the left and it stimulates both the right and left atria thereby resulting in contraction of both the right and left atria. After that it spreads towards the AV node and then to the bundle of He's. The AV node and the bundle of He's constitutes the AV junction. After crossing the AV junction, the impulse runs through the bundle of He's which gets divided into right and left branch and through the small small Parkinsy fibers the electrical impulse spreads in the ventricle and thereby ultimately resulting in contraction of both the right and left ventricle. The left branch of his again gets divided into two fascicles, anterior fascicles and posterior fascicle. Now at the resting state in a cardiac muscle fiber, it carries positive charge outside and negative charge inside. This resting state is known as polarized state. Whenever there is any stimulus, the cell goes into a state of depolarization. And during the depolarization, the outside of the cell becomes negative and inside becomes positive. This arrow shows the direction of depolarization. Once the muscle is depolarized, then again it comes back to its normal resting state and this phase is known as repolarization. So during repolarization again the outside of the cell becomes positive, inside becomes negative. The arrow shows the direction of repolarization. And finally, it comes back to the polarized state. Now regarding the leads, there are basically three types of lead. There are two types of limblets, bipolar and unipolar limblets. Bipolar limblets are three, known as lead 1, 2 and 3. Unipolar limblets are also three. They are known as AVR, AVL and AVF. The electrical activity in the horizontal plane is recorded by chest leads. Chest leads are six in numbers. They are V1, V2. V3, V4, V5 and V6. Now whenever an ECG is recorded, almost universally the speed of the recording paper is kept at 25 mm per second. So if the paper moves at a speed of 25 mm per second, then each small square horizontally will represent 
ज़ीरो पॉइंट ज़ीरो फोर सेकेंड एंड वर्टिकली ईच स्मॉल स्क्वेयर विल रिप्रेजेंट एन एम्पलीट्यूड ऑफ ज़ीरो पॉइंट वन मिली वोल्ट सो इन द हॉराइजोंटल प्लेन इट रिप्रेजेंट्स ड्यूरेशन एंड वर्टिकली इट रिप्रेजेंट्स एम्पलीट्यूड दैट इज इन मिली वोल्ट Now, whenever we are going to read an ECG, first of all, in the ECG paper, you should have a look at the standardization marker, which is also known as calibration marker. The marker will look like a square wave with ten mm of amplitude. suppose if the amplitude of the standardization marker is either more or less then the amplitude of p wave qrs complex and t wave all will be either larger or smaller than what it should be so it is very important that you should look at the standardization marker or calibration marker of the machine and then comment on the ecg now in ecg we will see following waves and complexes p wave qrs complex t wave and u wave p wave represents atrial depolarization qrs complex represents ventricular depolarization st segment t wave and u wave represents ventricular repolarization there is also a way for atrial repolarization but which is usually obscured by the qrs complex so normally we do not get to see it there are also two intervals in ecg one is peer interval one is qt interval pr interval it starts from the beginning of the p wave up to the beginning of qrs complex pr interval and qt interval it starts from the beginning of the q wave up to the end of t wave that is qt interval and st segment it is the segment between the end of s wave up to the beginning of t wave now how to calculate heart rate from an ecg first you should be looking at the rr interval you should find out the number of small or large squares in between the rr interval suppose if the rhythm is regular then the heart rate will be Thousand five hundred divided by number of small squares. Small squares in between R R interval. or else 300 divided by number of large squares in between two rr interval now suppose if the rhythm is not regular if the rhythm is irregular 
then how to calculate heart rate is that you have to look at the number of r waves within 6 seconds and it should be multiplied with 10 suppose the number of r waves within 6 seconds is 8 then the heart rate will be 8 multiplied by 10 that is 80 beats per minute so after commenting on heart rate and the rhythm now we should be commenting on each waves and segments p wave The normal duration of P wave is 2.5 mm. 2.5 mm that is up to 0.1 second. That is actually the maximum duration of P wave. The maximum amplitude of P wave. Is also 2.5 mm now if the P wave duration is more than 0.1 second this is known as P mitrally if duration is more than 1 second and it signifies left atrial enlargement now if the p wave amplitude is more than 2.5 mm it is known as p pulmonal if amplitude is more than 2.5 mm and this signifies right atrial enlargement so p mitral signifies left atrial enlargement and p pulmonal signifies right atrial enlargement next is qrs complex qrs complex signifies or represents the ventricular depolarization the normal duration of qrs complex is 0.1 second or less there are pathological conditions where QRS complex duration gets widened. Then T wave. Normally T wave is upright. But there are certain pathological conditions where T becomes flattened or inverted. Now coming to the PR interval. The normal duration of PR interval is from 0.12 second to 0.2 second. There are conditions where PR interval becomes shortened or there are other conditions where PR interval becomes widened. Now QT interval. QT interval is the interval between the beginning of the QRS complex up to the end of T wave. This is QT interval. But QT interval generally varies with the heart rate. And that's why we have to calculate corrected QT interval that is also known as QTC. Corrected QTC, QT interval is calculated by QT interval divided by square root of RR interval. This is also known as Bazet's formula. The normal QTC ranges from 0 0.35 to 
zero point four three seconds. There are conditions where QT interval gets prolonged. For example, like myocardial infarction, myocarditis. hypokalemia hypothermia and there are many other conditions and few conditions of shortened qt interval like hypercalemia hypothermia vagal stimulation vagal stimulation and digitalis effect now this is all about the different segments and waves regarding st segment normally st segment is flat but there are pathological conditions where st segment becomes elevated or gets depressed in the following classes we'll talk about all these abnormalities